All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to True Footy Podcast 63, 64. I always, it's every in that single episode, yeah. I forget to check before we start. Dude, I'm, I'm only six deep on Outback Hopes, and I'm sitting there like, is this six or seven? <laughs> <laughs> That's shameful. Yeah. Yeah. How are really? you? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Pretty good little weekend. It was a good weekend, yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, straight off the bat of grand final weekend, grand yep. final day being Saturday. That was a good day. We did a big live stream. Um, so thank you to everyone who jumped on the channel. We got 75 subscribers out of that. Oh, yeah. 38,000 views. Um, we peaked at 350-odd on the stream at the same time. Watching the game with us, Bush. It was yeah. a good day, wasn't it? Real good little game, yeah. Yeah. We, Pretty uh, contested on the whole. Like, Geelong, oh, Richmond, sorry, blew it out a bit. In the yeah. Half, but on the whole, it was pretty competitive. It had a shocking start, didn't it? Yeah. Like, remember that opening minute you had... Um, Gaz's shoulder. Gaz's Boston. shoulder. Foster and KO'd. Even didn't reach Stanley or some shit, get a bloody nose. Yeah, I think that was all in the first minute of the game. Yeah. Really kind of took the, the sting out of it. But it was a it was a good grand final. I think um, the Cats obviously got the jump. And um, uh, it was kind of similar to the 2019 prelim last year where the Cats sort of got out to a good start. People were like, oh, my God, Richmond's going to bottle it again. And then, <laughs> and then Richmond stormed home or won. Yeah. But um, before we get too far into that, we actually have to talk about our sponsors, Bush. Ooh. Been doing a little bit of manscaping lately. Yeah, just a smidge. Yeah, I can see. You had you, you had a couple of bu- uh, buttons undone during the live stream yeah. the other day. And, uh, I had the very... chest hair flowing, but you've got to have a bit of chest hair. You don't want to look 12. Like, True. You can't have too much. Well, you've it depends. Got to, you, yeah, it yeah. depends who your target audience is. <laughs> <laughs> that is inappropriate. Um, yeah, but we'll talk about manscaped.com uh, for a limited time only for, I think, the rest of October so far. Yeah. Uh, Manscaped is offering 20% off to people who use the code TRUE4020. You can find all the details of that in the description. Uh, Bush, it's got a great... They've sent us the products. Yep. It's uh, elite battery. I've been battery. very satisfied with it so far, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a real Andrew Gaff of a battery. You can run all day, 90 minutes, um, from start to finish of a football game. Uh, you can shave your nuts or your chest. Um, it's got the LED lights, so you can illuminate everything as you go. In your damp cave. Yeah, in your damp cave. Exactly right. That depends <laughs> wherever you shave. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, a lot of rave reviews about this product. I use it. It's great. Yep. Um, I have a chest of <laughs> an 11-year-old boy, as you were saying. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, get around it. If you want 20% off for the rest of the month, go down to manscaped.com, use the code TRUE4020, all caps, all one word, and uh, yeah. Last chance to get us that long-term deal, fellas. Yeah, ladies. true. We are kind of reliant on um, people signing up so that they extend with us. But um, but it is a good product anyway. I yeah. know a lot of people yeah, that want I'm it. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. Like, Evo A, I'm grateful they send us a free one just to talk about them a little bit on the channel. Like, yeah, exactly. Well, Evo A, I'm quite happy. Exactly. They do great work. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we'll get back to the football. Um, yeah, so... Did you, you were go, you were thinking Richmond going into the game, weren't you? Head was definitely, yeah, Richmond had got this, but it was like Hart, Geelong. Yeah. Head, Richmond, and I bet with my heart, unfortunately. I do, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm more of a head bet, um, giggity. But I think, <laughs> like, did, was there a point where you switched to Geelong? Like, in terms of who you thought was... Oh, no, you said you were oh, going Oh, winning was. Yeah, 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 so who do you think was going to win? Half time, I probably thought Geelong were holding on. Yeah, that was that sort of game. Yeah. Like, I think Geelong... They led 35 to 13, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, at one point, And they were just... In fact, I felt they left goals on the table in that first half. Like They could have actually yeah. really put them to the sword. And just a few drop marks and stuff like that. Early a couple in the of late third goals as well. as well from Richmond. Well, Dusty got that yeah. late one. And, yeah. and it was a very, very good goal as well. All like, of his goals were outstanding. Yeah, he kicks day. two yeah. sick late ones. Um, and they, But the first one was just as good almost as yeah. the last one. But um, completely off balance. He shrugs someone off. He snaps it over his shoulder. Like, few players in the game can do that. But it was a real momentum killer for Geelong. And I think, I remember thinking if Geelong get the next goal, this game's almost over. And instead, Dusty's the one that wins the ball, kicks it over his shoulder, and the momentum completely swings. He's the guy that can do that to a team. That's the thing with Dusty. Like, even if he's having a quiet game, he can just have a moment like that and just demoralize Mm. the opposition. Like, that. that's part of his value. I was sort of thinking about it. Like, it's just his ability to demoralize even if he's not necessarily like the accumulator or statistical yeah. monster some of these other guys are. True, true. And in big games like that, uh, big moments like that can really turn the tide. I remember, do you recall in 2019, it was a fairly even first quarter between Richmond and GWS in the grand final and Daniel Rioli got that goal mm. right on quarter time. That was a real yeah. goal. The, the roar of that crowd, especially at the MCG, where we've been all Tigers fans. 
that's the thing with Geelong more broadly, just quickly. Like, they're that mm. sort of team where, like, everyone sort of says they're not as talented as, like, the old Brisbane Free Paters, the Hawthorne Free Paters, the Geelong, historical Geelong teams. But, like, they've got a lot of those sort of guys that have that talent. Are you talking about Richmond, sorry? Yeah. Oh, you said Geelong. But, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you're talking about Richmond. Yeah. yeah, okay. I'm saying they've got a lot of those, like, dusty Daniel Rioli type guys who aren't necessarily, like, the statistical, like, elite players of the yeah. competition. But they've got that ability to just impact a game in just, like, moments and just destroy the other team's morale. And Yeah, well, Richmond's when we've seen Richmond have a 10 goal win and get no Brownlow votes because no player dominates enough yeah. individually um, like I think Fremantle yeah. is a classic example Five of that you always a, get three votes I was going to say it's been a couple yeah. of occasions uh, where Fremantle has been belted by them and then gone 3-2-1 uh, Fremantle so yeah, um, yeah no, it, they are one of those teams for sure um, but you know Richmond really steamrolled them in the second half I think um, they outscored them by like like well doing the math they must have outscored them by like 10 goals to win by 5 goals yeah. after being yeah, um, almost four five, goals, yeah, so yeah. nine goals or something like that. Um, the clearance tired really turned in the second half, and there's been a bit of criticism on Chris Scott. For not dumping danger? Yeah. Well, there, what yeah. do you reckon about that? I'd probably... You should have probably put him in there a bit sooner. Like, he is, regardless, your best midfielder, even though mm. you need him more as your best forward, or second best forward. But yeah. the ball starts in the midfield, so ultimately you've got to give him that crack when the tides are changing. Let yeah. him try and make an adjustment like i think it was like 24 clearances to 16 in the second half but there was a point early in that second term where geelong was still ahead but it said richmond had like nine of the last 10 inside 50s yeah, and it's yeah. like well at that point you're starting to think i it need was to like make 10 in a row at least yeah maybe um, it was 10 yeah. in a row there's yeah. at least 10 in a row inside 50s for rich surely while uh while the tide's turning that way you chuck dangerfield in the guts just to even if it's just to win yeah. some territory like just exactly. banging out of the guts just get the ball forward so I understand that they need him as like a foil for Hawkins and, and yeah. Rowan and, and all that but um, yeah that he's got a little bit of criticism for that he's defended it Chris Scott and I don't know maybe yeah. it wouldn't have won them the game in the end Richmond were just too strong but um, I think it would have helped yeah I mean it was really <sighs> Geelong are really unlucky that they've come up against this side Richmond they, they probably will never get a good as good an opportunity to beat Richmond in a grand final as they did this year so like not at the MCG where Richmond is prodigiously good uh Vlostian out in the opening minute for the whole game obviously Ablett came back on so Geelong actually had an extra man for most of that Gaz wasn't 100% but yeah yeah you're right but I'd I'd argue Vlostian's more more important he was I'd agree with that as well but yeah and then also having a four goal lead so um great grand final heartbreaking a little bit for Cats fans uh no doubt especially lead by that much yeah in that game and they just got overcome by an absolute champion side who we will elaborate on shortly but in terms of the grand final bush where do you think this ranks across other grand finals this decade as in terms of quality of game the quality of game yeah it'd probably be like that's like top tier is probably like the Collingwood West Coast game yeah like that sort of thing that's probably just like that tier below yeah so you got I have the three this decade as Collingwood West Coast Hawthorne Sydney in 12 yeah and the Bulldogs win for me um that in 16 and then I reckon it's just behind that. And it, it kind of reminds me of when Geelong beat Collingwood in 2011. The margin mm. ended up being, I think, 38 points, but the game was so good. Yeah, like Richmond saw, obviously, real sorry. Yeah, Richmond obviously won by five goals, but if you look at that score and you don't realise, with two minutes or five minutes to go, Menegola kicked that goal and, and there were yeah. only two goals down. It was it was game on. So, um, yeah, really, really good game. And interestingly, I learned that this was the third time Chris Scott and Damien Hardwick have faced each other in a grand final. Shit. So they faced each other twice. Oh, yeah, Essendon. As players. Yeah, Hardwick would have played for Essendon when Scott. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and okay. then I think in 2004 as well, uh, when Chris was playing for Brisbane, Hardwick yeah. played for Port Adelaide in that game. So. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, no, interesting. Well, like, bit, that can't be, can't be too yeah. many like relationships like that in the AFL. I thought that was yeah. interesting. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Richmond specifically. Is this their best flag? I'd probably think so. Yeah. Because for me, the adversity this year compared to the other two has just been mm. exponentially more for them. Like, yeah, they've been away from their home for a hundred plus days. They've had to play more less than seventeen games or whatever at the MCG. <laughs> they don't have the comfort of going home to their families in Melbourne every night. They're hubbing in places, and sh- mm. so out of their free flags, it's definitely the probably. It's probably the greatest achievement. Yeah. Isn't it? Like in terms of the fan satisfaction, this probably doesn't rank as highly as running 17. rampant after an MCG. Oh yeah, seventeen. Seventeen. I think the satisfaction. I'm sure. I'm sure Richmond fans can confirm that the satisfaction of winning the grand final in seventeen would be better than winning your third. Like it mm. can't be that same high every time. But 
I think Footy A to Z are a great channel. Go check them out. They're, they're Richmond fans. And Zach was saying to me, um, he said, this would be the crown jewel if they won the premiership this year. Mm. And I think just because of all that adversity, you said, like, they did, like Rance retired. They'd feel better than 19, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I th- yeah, probably. I don't know. It's a good question. That's one for the fans to answer. But, like, think about it. Rance did his ACL last year and Richmond mm. have won both legs since then. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. Rance yeah. is, like, their second best player behind Dusty just about. So Well, he was their second most <coughs> rated player. A lot of people felt he was overrated. There's well, that's true. Of, yeah. yeah. That's varying true. opinions about how impactful he actually is, but he's very good backman regardless. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think they were lucky that Grimes stood up and yeah. just just about as good in 2019 anyway. So, um, yeah, ridiculous. But we need to talk about how much of a turnaround Richmond has faced in the decade. I've found a really interesting video. I think mean, it's doing the rounds at the moment, so everyone would have seen it. But Neil Baum, when he took over as uh, CEO in 2010, Richmond were the worst team in the comp. The Eagles won the spoon that year. But halfway through that year, Richmond appeared to be worse, and then they sort of came good at the end of the season. So the Eagles ended up winning the spoon, but I'll never forget, they were talking about Richmond as a team that could lose every game that year. And he came out and said they had a plan to win three flags by 2020. Huh. Isn't that phenomenal? Like, Fuck. it was like a leaked yeah. document. Like, I don't think they... And, but he, he came out and yeah. was, like, answering it on Footy Classified, getting absolutely grilled by Gary Lyon yeah. and Caroline Wilson. They're saying, three flags by 2020... And everyone's like, smoking, are you bro? serious, mate? I cannot believe that that has come true. That yeah. is ridiculous. He, he'd, be, he'd be pumping his trumpet a bit at the moment, old yeah. Barbie, I'm guessing. Yeah, he was very dignified. I, I, this was from 2010, the interview, and he was very, mm. very, uh, yeah, very dignified and just well-spoken, and, and I mm. had a lot of respect for him, especially because he's been vindicated. But they also want, he also wanted, at the time, they were the worst team just about. Dusty Martin just been recruited, hadn't played his first game, and they said three finals in five years. They achieved that by 2015. And um, what else did they say? I think they said 75,000 members and they've just blown Blue, that out of yeah. the water. So, Or maybe it was by 2015. But either way, yeah. So it's not very often that you see some audacious mm. plan like that come off. That is just phenomenal. Uh, and like, just hats off to everyone involved on and off the field. Um, and then also, I do remember this. Is it Kevin Bartlett? And I roasted him for this. I think everyone did. In 2018, after they'd won their first flag, I'm sure it was. I'm not, I'm not mixing that up. Kevin Bartlett, former Richmond legend, or Richmond legend, said that Richmond are aiming for a historic five-peat. <laughs> now, this is after they'd won one flag and they've yeah. been roasted. But if you if you look at 2018, where they lost the prelim and finished first and went 18 and four, they're unlucky not to have four in a row. They've yeah. literally won three out of the last four. So as much as it disgusts me to admit, that's actually not the worst call I've ever seen. <laughs> um, I'm going to claim that 2018 flag for the Eagles as hard as I can but still yeah. like it's just it's just ridiculous and there's um, I think in the last round of 20 is it 2016 last round of 2016 the year before they won the flag Richmond lost by 113 points to Sydney and really? people were talking about them as a rabble Hardwick was about to get yeah. sacked even yeah, like, Hardwick was the hottest seat in football yeah exactly right a real Hardwick, Ken Hinkley yeah. sort of situation there yeah. um, it's ridiculous but you were you. What were you saying last night? You made a point about Jaden Short. He yeah. won. I, when I found out he'd won their like best and fairest, I'm like Jaden Short. And then like I'd seen the statistics. He like led the league in like meters gained. He was an outstanding like half backer. I was surprised he wasn't more or less serious all Australian consideration. Like me too. I didn't realize he had such yeah, dominant. Like Twenty season. touches a game, I believe it was like 19, 20 touches a game. Yeah, like that. I was staggered when he won their BNF. I get. I guess yeah. it does kind of reinforce the idea that. We talk about Dusty as this great, and he is a great, but he obviously doesn't do it the whole season, yeah. which is why... We, That's why there's more of a debate around it. Yeah, exactly right. So when Danger and uh, Fife, for instance, in 2019, first and second in the Brownlow by, by a long way, we're like, oh, those two are the best players. And then you have a final series like this, and it's like, ah, Dusty's the best player. But yeah. they, it, it just really ebbs and flows. It's really interesting. But that is a phenomenal achievement to be a best and fairest winner in a premiership year. I wonder how many yeah. people have done that and not been an Australian. Probably not too many. Yeah, that's the thing. They usually lean towards a top team rather than a shit team if they yeah got a couple of guys they can't decide between. It'd be interesting to do some research on that. I probably should have done it beforehand, but I mean, <laughs> I think Yo won ours when we won, and he was on the bench. I'm pretty certain. Huh. I could be wrong on that. Actually, he might not have been. Um, a Did Jane Short even make the forty? I don't know. Huh. I don't know. I don't really look at the forty to be honest. Yeah. I look at the twenty-two, but. <laughs> I'm going to cough as well. Maybe yeah, nice. No, coordinated. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Um, another interesting point, a really interesting point, and this is something I've thought about with Richmond quite a lot over the last couple of years. 
Hardwick was saying that they reflect on 2018 as almost being too good too early. So in mm. in 2017 and in 2019 and again in 2020, Richmond went through those first couple of months of the season and nobody thought this is a premiership contender. So Richmond went were like five and four after nine rounds, I think, in 2017. In 2019, they had that horrific start with injury as well. It came good later. Rance did his ACL. This year, the same thing. They had... Um, a really indifferent start to the year. I remember they lost to St Kilda significantly. Um, off the top of my head, there were more teams that beat them than that. They had injuries. Hawley and Edwards don't make the hub. And people, Richmond just feel like they're back at the pack. Mm. They come home strong and by far and away the best team throughout the finals. The point he made is they were doing work with their strength and conditioning, conditioning coach to try and peak later in the season. Uh-huh. And that's really come to fruition because... That's if you look, been their fame, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because Richmond, the only year that they didn't win the flag was the year they came first. Yeah. So what they're doing instead is timing themselves well for finals. And I wonder if this is a model that... Hawthorne, I'd, I'd definitely compare it to the Hawthorne. Yeah. Like, you never saw those Clarks and Free Pay teams really finish minor premiers. Yeah. They'll never... Well, how many yeah. times has it happened this decade where the team that's won the minor premiership won the flag? Don't think I think Hawthorne did it in 13. Yeah. Once, twice, twice. Uh, I think that's it. No, yeah. I could be wrong on that. If <sighs> And yeah, clearly Short wasn't even in the 40. There you go, yeah. yeah. I just had a quick Google. I was curious. I'll say Hawthorne in 13, Collingwood in 10. That's the only two I remember mm. from this decade. Yeah. That's incredible. So, I mean, yeah, it just really goes to show that I think it could be... Whether or not it's a, club, a model that clubs are already looking at and being like, yeah. oh, let's peak later in the season, and they're just not doing it right, or they're just not thinking about it at all. It'd be interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the other thing is, I've just written down just some random points here, but yeah. Damien Hardwick is overlooked at Melbourne and Essendon for Dean Bailey and Matthew Knight. <laughs> so, <laughs> what could have been for those two clubs? Uh, um, we'll talk about Dusty now. Especially because he was an ex-Essendon man as well. Yeah, exactly Knight right. Yeah. It's yeah. overlooked for another an son. ex-Essendon. Knights was Essendon, wasn't he? Thanks, or was he so. Richmond? Or was he both? I think I he know. might have been both, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was a... Uh, very, um, yeah. what's the word? Indifferent little tenure at um, Essendon. We'll talk about Dusty. I know you wanted to bring this up. Where does he sit as the best player in the comp? Oh, like, like, because we were sort of having the conversation. It's like whether you distinguish like a goatee sort of like legacy incorporated, like the narrative of their career sort of debate or just purely on-field talent. Mm. Like with the legacy and stuff, he's probably taken a big step over like the Fife and Danger for that debate, I'd say. Yeah. Like three Norm Smiths, three premierships. Like, yeah, Fife's up a brown low on him. That's probably the one thing keeping Fife somewhat in the race. But yeah. he'd need some of that other success to catch up to Dusty. Yeah. And if Dusty wins another brown low, it's over, I'd have to say. Like, he's the yeah, best player of enough. the era. Yeah, like, it's a tough one because, re- yes, Dusty's won three Norms, which is an incredible achievement. Two of them deserving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was still pretty good in yeah, 17 as well. He was good he was in 17, probably, but yeah. Paulie was just another level. He just, yeah. But, I mean, the, what he has over Fife is he plays in a team that's played in three grand finals. Yeah. Where Fife and Danger have played in one losing grand final yeah, exactly. league. So, the norms by themselves, while it is an amazing achievement, probably doesn't really fit mm. into this conversation against Dusty and Fire and Danger. Last year, I had Danger number one, and this, this was before Fife on the brown low. And Fife number two, Dusty number three. And now this year, it's after this final series. It's hard to compare because I think we can agree Danger and particularly Fife are better over the course of a season yeah. in terms of consistency. But Danger, I made Dusty this point about Danger. Du- du- Dusty can do things no one else mm. can. And that, uh, that's what I used to say about Ablett and Judd and Franklin, yeah. who are like the probably the best three I've ever seen. Mm. Dusty is starting to encroach on that level where he's just like the goals he kicked, that, yeah, that no was bullshit. Chris Judd in yeah. his prime. It was, but he's, he's Chris Judd in his prime and he can kick. He's mm. the best kick in the league. Mm. Like some of the kicks he pulls off. Like I used to say Jetta was the best kick in the league. I'm thinking Dusty Martin is probably the best field kick there. in the league right now. Um, field so, kicks, tough. Like Mitch Duncan for me is quite up there for field kicks. I don't know. I think the, the velocity that Dusty can kick it at over like 65 metres and it, it looks like he can kick 65 metres mm. and hurt someone with a chest mark. Mm. <laughs> so I don't know. Like... I'd say the way I'd almost describe it, he's Chris Judd, but he's the best kick in the game. But Chris Judd was a prodigious clearance mid over the course of a season, yeah. which Dusty isn't. Yeah. And that probably comes into the conversation. Like, that probably is why Dusty is such a good burst player. 
it's not sustainable for him to do that yeah. for a whole season. So you can stick him in there and get a few clearances when he gets like one hundred percent. Like I've seen him have thirty eight against the wall. Yeah. yeah, he's had like thirty eight posy games. He's capable of. Yeah. But I guess I mean like it's not sustainable for him to be a full time. Mm. midfielder turning it out and it'll also be the finals player that he is yeah it's not conducive to what they want to achieve yeah sure. and it's a model that's working so yeah. I mean he probably could be one of the goats definitely I don't know yeah three flags three norms of Brownlow yeah I, f- I feel like if, if his power rankings he's just etched himself like he's just edged yeah. ahead now he's won a bunch of those Gary Ayres like the best in the finals medals yeah, as well yeah true well he's undoubtedly the best finals player ever I think that, mm. well, he's been th- BOG three finals in a row yeah. Um, which probably in itself is, you know, an Bit of an unheard of achievement, least, yeah. to be honest. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just going to say his capacity exceeds uh, that of anyone in the game right now, Dusty. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But probably not the best player this year. You'd say Lockie Neal is probably the best yeah. player this year. So, yeah, it's tough. We have recency bias and we... But still, like... With the Titch Brownlow year, you never were sort of saying. Yeah, we'd never say who's the best player. No, that's like, true. No, oh, I mean, I'm not saying Lockie Neal is better than Dusty. Yeah. No, mm. just statistically. But statistically and consistency, which yeah. you have to, you have to. Remember yeah, on. obviously, yeah. you have to for Brownlow especially. Mm. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Geelong because we have really mm. gone hard on the Richmond stuff, and that was the thing I got criticised mm. for a bit, being really salty about Richmond winning. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I've been nothing but praise for him. I was openly going for Geelong. But um, yeah, yeah, no. I was somewhat salty. Yeah, we've been yeah, but we we kissing <laughs> Richmond's ass, so it's yeah. fine. Um, let's you talk about Geelong. With it, yeah, yeah, outstanding season again. And if you look at the last two years in conjunction, and maybe even further than that, they're probably going to go down as one of the better teams to not win a flag. We talk. Mm. You look at St Kilda, one of those teams that couldn't quite pinch a flag right as Geelong were at the peak of their powers and Collingwood mm. sort of emerged as potentially the next great thing. St Kilda were right in between that and they the just... Bridesmaid. Yeah, literally one point off being oh. a premiership team and Geelong is the team that's a very, very good team but playing against this champion teams, Richmond side. Yeah. So, very stiff and we have to acknowledge what a great season for them. Again, in a hub situation, gone through, gone through the same adversity as the nine other clubs, including Richmond. They lost Tim Kelly 12 months ago and no one thought they would get better. I don't know if they got better because they were a very good team last mm. year, but they certainly didn't get any worse, which is a massive achievement. And this Chris Scott legacy, he's only got one flag, but it's it's incredible what he's actually been able to achieve. So, yes, he, he inherited a great side, but he also, I was reading an article, he had a contract where he needed to win a flag within a certain amount of years or win a certain amount of finals. Mm. Basically, it had really strict performance measures on him, and he's at least ticked the boxes there. And, I mean, the teams, he, he, they have turned over the list. Like, we've, yeah. seen, we've seen players... They've well, moved a lot of great players on in while he's been there. Like, he's been the transition coach, like, from that yep. era with, like, your Enrights, your Bartels, your Chappies, your Harleys, all those sort of dudes. Yeah, for sure. He's transitioned into, like, a new era where they're bringing in dangers... Mm. Making so like giving Joel Selwood even more of a focal point than he already had in those early sort of days. It's it's crazy. He's basically bookended nine years of relevance. So he won the flag in his first year. He's made a grand final his ninth year. They've missed the finals once in that time, and I think they come top four four times in that time. So, uh-huh. it, unlucky, close but no cigar. But mm. it's this. It is this is a great, very good Geelong team. But I read that this is actually the oldest grand final team in history, and the fifth oldest to play any game. Shit. That is an old yeah. ass team. That's a old. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it sounds like they're going to bleed some youth this off season as well. Ye- what do you mean? Like constables looking. Clark's oh, really? a more yeah. dubious rumor. I don't know if Clark will happen. Narkel, even though he's True. probably a bit in and out of the side, but yeah, you have to wonder what that's a product of. Probably Jeremy Cameron mm. be coming in. Yeah. Um, obviously, Ablett's going to leave, but um, and potentially Harry Taylor as well. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens there. Um, Chris Scott's quoted as saying, we don't have any intention of deliberately conceding to try to build a good team in the future. I think he's referring to tanking then. He says, we want to do it now if you can. So he, the way he sees it is um, he's got a very now focus, obviously, yeah. as evidenced by his selection. Um, they're really doubling down on the team they have now. And uh, that's evidenced by the fact that in addition to Jeremy Cameron, they're looking at Sean Higgins or Isaac Smith, surely not both. Yeah. Well, but, Higgins sounds almost certain yeah, from what I've read. I think if Smith goes anywhere, he'll go to Melbourne, if I had to guess, right now. Um, but Cameron in and Higgins in to replace Taylor and Ablett, you know, this team's going to go uh, again for sure. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Gary Ablett. Where does he rank uh, in terms of the best players you've seen? 
I'd say AFL era goat. Like ever since yeah. the VFL became the AFL, he's the yeah. goat of that so era. So 1990, we're talking. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. It's. Uh, I mean, I we're a little bit young to see um, Ablett Senior and mm. and Wayne Carey in their prime, but I think in terms of longevity and consistency. Ablett being the best player for that long, yeah, I think mm. I think there's a very strong argument. Mate. I think I think I made the point in the chat that at the peak of their powers, I'd say Chris Judd at West Coast during that Brownlow period, um, and Lance Franklin in 2008. Those are probably the best two individuals over a short period I've ever yeah. seen. But Gary Ablett, throughout about a 10 year period, was yeah. almost at that level, and Judd and Franklin were definitely not sustaining okay. it for as long. So I think, yeah, I'd probably agree that he probably is the best. And he's got a little bit of a touch of the Ricky Pontings here where he hasn't really been on his power, like, mm. since he did his shoulder, basically, the yeah. last, like, however long, few seasons. He hasn't been as good as he was, and that yeah. may cause... People to diminish his prior yeah. greatness. Yeah, because yeah. Ponting really hung on for really way yeah. too long there, and his average dipped hard, um, and people... It, it kind of almost diminished his legacy a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying able to hang on too long, but I'm, what I'm saying is, if you look at his last few seasons, you almost forget how good this guy yeah, was. Yeah. Like physically doing things that, like, you can't believe anyone can do. Some of the goals he kicked. Yeah, he was just the most coordinated football player I've probably ever seen. I'd yeah, say, in terms of like pure hand-eye coordination, like. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he seems like a great bloke as well, and mm. it, yeah, it is a little bit sad. That he didn't go in on flag, it would have made a really nice narrative there. But um, it was good. Both teams clapped him off, though. That was good. Yeah, they took good. their medals off for the guard of honor and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, no, great, great career. And um, yeah, it's a little sad. It's a little bit like mm. when Messi or Ronaldo retire from um, from soccer. Yeah. Like we're witnessing one of the greats. So, yeah. Oh well. Uh, at least he got back to his boyhood yeah. club and played the grand final in his last game. There is yeah. some, something nice about that. Something poetic. Um, let's talk about the season as a reflection as a whole. Um, how will you how will you reflect on this season as a fan in the future? I thought it was wild, like just like <laughs> unprecedented. Like you know, it was just like when you reflect on this era, you're not just going to be reflecting on football or the basketball or anything. You're just going to be reflecting on like the chaos of the whole thing and how like the mm. sport from a sporting context, how they sort of did what they had to and sort of mm. gave the fans as good a product as they could and, like, competed. And mm. Yeah, it was quite a big yeah. sacrifice for the players yeah. as well, um, which people are quick to give players mm. shit for, like, oh, you make so much money, like, so you have mm. to go hub for a while. But we would find mm. it tough if we had mm. to go away from our families and loved ones. Yeah. Um, and obviously taking, like, a six, 50% pay cut or whatever as well. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I know they're making a lot of money, but still, to dramatically lose that much money at yeah. one time, it's going to have... Yeah. It, it would be a little bit distressing. So, uh, And then on top of that, to play to their absolute max capacity for fans. Yeah. Um, yeah. Without I, them actually being in attendance as well, a large yeah. proportion of the season as well. Yeah. And then if you're Richmond or Geelong, to make it all the way and go to the grand final and... Yeah. ultimately win a flag in Richmond's case it's an incredible achievement yeah. I think like as a player like if I was like an AFL player I'd be most proud of like a flag if I'd won it this year like mm. with my team like yeah. bad adversity like especially being a Victorian like, well any team I know this is iffy this is, might sound silly but if I if the Eagles had won this year there would be a part of me saying oh we should have been at the MCG Mm. Uh, I, I know. I guess it's good for Richmond that they won three. I, now. I got to admit, like purely from my end as a Freo fan, I'd be a bit like if the Premiership we finally wins the one in this like weird, mm. unprecedented season. I just, I'd be a bit like, it just I be a little. Just want, I just want a conventional one first. It would just nice. take the shine off it. Like the the moment you fantasize is about this final siren going in the afternoon, the late afternoon, yeah. not at night at the not MCG. That night shit, yeah. Um, and you see him up on the dice at that ground. Like for me, that's that's the ultimate. But yeah. I mean, like I said, Richmond fans have won three. They've seen, they've seen their team win three flags now. So like, the, yeah. there's not an element of that. And I, I gotta say as well, I'm kind of glad that I, I definitely don't think an asterisk would have applied to Brisbane if had they won the flag. But I'm kind of glad that we had two non Queensland mm. teams in the grand final playoff. So that's just ultimately put it to bed. No one can say mm. Richmond had an unfair advantage. Um, and therefore, it'll live long in history as Richmond won that flag. Oh yeah, that was in Queensland. That, yeah. right, whereas yeah. you know, there's no there's no narrative around um, the no legitimacy foot, no, of it. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, and 
I have to madly respect the AFL for the way they've dragged us through this season. Mm. We actually got a season. They've handled it outstandingly, I'd say. Gil's yeah. done a great job. Yeah, it could have. we could have easily had... This was nearly the season that didn't happen, um, particularly with how mm. screwed Melbourne was, or Victoria was through a large period of the season. Got 10 clubs to uproot and move to Queensland, and we had a successful season. <laughs> um, as I said, I'm sure that was really challenging for players, but... Um, yeah, the logistics, like even having to have like a transition hub, like you, you know how Shane Edwards and Gaz Ablett mm. were training together? Yeah, 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 true. Transition hub, like even having the logistics of having something like that so guys can, if they have to, get back to Melbourne, mm. see family, that sort of stuff. Like And the go- negotiations and stuff like that around logistics with the, the governments, state governments yeah. and stuff like that, this would have been a shit of a year for yeah. him. Like he has earned his pay pack this year. Yeah. And you can sort of, and at that point, like you can sort of say why they've sort of gone with Queensland as hard as they have. Like Queensland's probably made their job is a- easy for them like so mm. of course they're gonna yeah you know, yeah whereas, well, whereas yeah. other state governments have got other priorities which is fair yeah enough. like fair for instance McGowan I don't yeah. think really wanted the grand final here like no. I'm sure he would have loved it but he yeah. wasn't really pushing for it it wasn't a priority in reality which definitely you know, was not a priority over here enough. for us I can't help but feel it would have made a it would have been a beautiful grand final here, but we, we weather won't go was too perfect. Far. The yeah, was perfect. and it's just a, it's just a nice ground so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um nah anyway we'll, and we would have had 60 yeah, exactly. We won't labour on that, but it would have been a, a lovely grand final. Uh, well, I can't wait for a normal season next year, but again, we're not guaranteed a normal season. Yeah, I was going to say, what year. What do you think the odds are of a normal season? The last Long I heard... Muir, sorry to cut you off there before. <laughs> I'm immediately asking you the question. I was just going to say, I'll just give you a bit of context. Long Muir did say in an interview the other week, he's reasonably confident there'll be an element of hubs next season. Yeah, so the only stuff I've really heard about it is that potentially a longer season and I imagine mm-hmm. that's to uh, longer than 22 rounds so potentially 26 and I think the idea behind that is to maximise okay. revenue get this game back to what it was help the clubs out no complaints from me as a result probably not going back to a full time game but maybe 18 minutes yeah. 18 and a half instead of 17 and a half if you go on 26 round season I can tolerate that so yeah. we're still getting more football um, I think what could what is an interesting thing that's going to come out of this season is that I think the players, based on feedback from the players, and this probably would have never happened otherwise, they're a little bit more open to the idea of travelling for a few weeks at a time yeah. and coming back. And I think fly in, fly out. Regardless of COVID and reduced capacity to fly in week in, week out, that could be something that comes in more often. Yeah. So, for instance, the Eagles, are, if, if they have two trips to Adelaide, in a year, yeah. they'll go and play two games at Adelaide yeah. in a row, or they'll say go to the East Coast the and East play Coast. two Queensland teams, two New South yep. Wales teams, or whatever. Yep, uh, maybe not all after each other, but yeah. like at different points of the season. The two in the same state, if they're still keeping stuff separated by state, possibly. Yes, yeah, and then oh, you know, say so go to Melbourne, play three games at Marvel or something like yeah. that, and vice versa, then get like a month at home or something like that. So that that could be something that is that that will be a lasting effect out of this season i don't know for sure whether or not they're they're keen enough for it but i think it logistically it makes sense and if players can get used to being on the road for two or three weeks sort of like cricketers do obviously that's months but um now that now they've got a taste of it they could see the benefits of being like all right three weeks away three weeks at home yeah um so i think we could see that next year and then going forward potentially as well. So Yeah, like next year, 100%, I say, yeah. they'll have to incorporate some aspect of that. Like, Yeah, it's probably naive to think we're going to have fly in fleet, uh, like home game, away game, home game, yeah. away game for interstate clubs next year. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess we can probably tease out a little bit of the trade and free, ag- yeah. free agency stuff, which is stuff we're going to do plenty of content on over the next coming yeah. month i think it's all going to be done within just a little month. intro a little buddy what's yeah. happened so far like you haven't we don't hear too much this early you hear the rumors and like you don't mm. hear specifics like what's substantively going to happen in terms of like trades to get these deals mm. we're hearing about done like you're only hearing about potential deals like well i think the free agency stuff sounds like it's virtually like the, the, the language i read on an article for instance like most as of soon them as, have decided yeah like yeah. zach williams to carlton bradge yeah. crouch to st kilda like these yeah. things sound fairly like Obviously, what needs to play out is whether the club's going to match. So, yeah. in the instance of Jeremy Cameron going to Geelong, which is a potentially massive deal. Excuse me. They're matching regardless, let's be honest. What do you think of this Trelaw business? <sighs> it's weird, like, because the thing is, like, he's on such a long term deal at Collingwood, like, the five years. But, like, 900K the, or something? Yeah, it's like yeah, good money, long term deal, backloaded as well, I believe his deal is, which is yep. probably Collingwood's incentive to try and flick him if mm. Collingwood are, in fact, trying to flick him. Yeah. But the thing is, like, 
he has that five year deal. His wife's only signed a one year deal to play in Queensland, and everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, he's moving to Queensland because his wife signed a one year deal." Like, realistically, maybe his wife's netball opportunities are dried up in Melbourne. Mm. And well, you have to a, think as an athlete, you got to just take the best opportunity exactly. in front of you. Yeah, and they they're probably like, "Yeah, I'll go up there for a year, and then we can resume our family life in Melbourne." Like, that's probably what they'll think, and not. Yeah. Ooh, let's move Adam up there too, sort of thing. Well, my understanding of this situation is that, yeah, Trelaw were never actually intended to go to Queensland, but then somewhere along the line he's had a communication with Collingwood and what Tom Morris and other people are reporting mm. or alluding to, there's innuendo, is that Collingwood is actually saying, if you want to go, maybe you should. Yeah. Or or something, at least not really giving him an answer as to yeah. whether they want to keep him. And the obvious incentive here is the 900k could be used at going for someone like Jeremy Cameron. Yeah. You'd probably get pick four out of Gold Coast for that. Yeah. They'd have to use that in a trade for Jeremy Cameron. But this could be very I, interesting. I heard with the Cameron thing, like one of the I forget which AFL journal specifically, but with Cameron it was always GWS or Geelong. Like those really? were the two options. Like he doesn't interesting. he didn't give a shit about anyone else. Like Geelong for his like close to home, like mm. family factor or GWS because that's where he yeah. built his legacy and built himself up in Sydney. Fair enough. That, yeah, well, yeah, I can't speak yeah. to that, obviously. Uh, that'd be very interesting to see how that plays out. Obviously, Collingwood wouldn't ship off Trelaw without saying, without getting an okay from Jeremy Cameron saying, yeah, yeah I'll come play for you. If Jeremy yeah. Cameron's not interested, you wouldn't go yeah. shipping off with Trelaw. So, um, yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, Joe Danaher to Brisbane. Yeah. That one's quieted down a little bit, but that's probably going to happen. So, yeah, um, yeah, we'll have to, we'll just have to keep under. I bet, buddy, Essendon are pissed off, though, because they could have flicked him last year to Sydney, who had decent picks. Now he wants to go to Brisbane, who were the minor pretty much the minor like second or third on the ladder or whatever they were that is their so, fault entirely yeah, though. exactly yeah it's Essendon's fault but yeah still they'd be spewing I'd be like oh why couldn't you just go back to Sydney again this year yeah. like, <laughs> Sydney is still shit go to them yeah yeah that's but true. instead they've given another year for new teams to enter the race and it's bitten mm. in the arse yeah that is yeah that is this the the risk they took when they held on to him for a year they what was it I don't think they were offered pick five and nine last year. I think it was like pick five and something. Twenty. Else. It was like five, five and twenty two or yeah. twenty something like that. Yeah. yeah, but that would look pretty juicy right now. Um, They'd pounce on that right now, especially considering Brisbane will probably offer them like fucking seventeen in the future first. Yeah. <laughs> which will probably be also be seventeen. Yeah. True. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we're just about ready to wrap up on the True Footy podcast. Um, yeah. Just reflecting, I guess, mostly on. An incredible Richmond flag. Um, yep. It does sicken me a little bit, but <laughs> definitely. But as a, um, you know, as a lover of football, we have to acknowledge how good this team is. You and got to respect what they've done. Like they've like, f- yeah. well and truly etched those names alongside the Geelong team, the Hawthorne team. I, I, I think we distinguish the team that's won a three peat. Yeah. We'll probably sit just a, ahead of someone yeah. who's just missed out. But um, I think. Yeah, I think Richmond, in terms of what they've achieved... It's them right or 7, 9, 11 Geelong. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, what I was alluding to. Even though I think that Geelong 07, 08 team is the best individual team mm. I've ever seen, like, what you have to you have to acknowledge yeah. that this run from Richmond's incredible. Like, it yeah. could have easily been four flags, and there's nothing stopping them next year. Exactly. That window's wide open. Yeah. That's the thing with Geelong. They could keep that window open over three, four years. Yeah, there's... They're not that old. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, they've got a bit of youth now. I mean, youth always looks better in a good team. Yeah. So, someone like a Noah Bolt or a Shai yeah. Bolton, very good, talented players. You chuck them in maybe a St. Kilda, mm-hmm. you chuck them in a North Melbourne, they don't look Bigger as good. Bigger role. So, it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, but... Um, but their heavyweights are still like late 20s, mm. low, low 30s sort of thing. Give me a predicted grand final for next year off the top of your head. I'm not Ooh, I'll put Richmond in it. That's, I'll, yeah, it's hard I'll not say to. I'll say half. And... Ooh, I'm going to go out the box and say Melbourne. Oh, that's stinky. Richmond, Melbourne. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um... I my head is saying Richmond, but I'll chuck out a Brisbane GWS. Ooh, yeah. yeah. But then, then I just remembered Jeremy Cameron might leave. <laughs> yeah, but <sometimes, laughs> and Zach Williams leaving. Yes, well, sometimes you lose your best player and get better. Look at Geelong. They yeah. they took or West Coast took their best player, and Geelong was still better than West Coast this year. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's the thing with footy. It's like twenty two people. Like mm. one player doesn't make nearly as much of a difference as they do in a sport like basketball. Yeah. Or even cricket, maybe, because there's 11 guys compared to 22. Like, so yeah. one person's up for twice the impact. Sort of yeah, thing. that's very true. Now, I'll, I'll change that, actually. I'll say Richmond, Brisbane. <laughs> yeah, talk myself out of it. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for uh, enjoying this great season with us. 
uh, this wacky and wild season. Thank um, you for getting around the stream on Saturday. Yeah, subscribe if you're new as well. Um, check out manscaped.com. Check out our Back Hoops, Hoops. Experience, yep. Bush's it. NBA yep. channel. Check out Cool World, Jesse's podcast with our other friend Dylan. Yeah, yeah. Um, but most importantly, stick around with True Footy um, as we go yep. into the trade and draft period. That's at least another month of content. And then in the summer, I'm still going to be around. So. And that's the fun stuff where he loves our draft. And yeah. We're draft and trade nerds over here. It's tough because it just moves so quickly as well. Yeah. Though. You have to make a video at the right time. But um, but yeah, we'll be around. Yeah. We might do a um, trade period uh, stream. live stream. Yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah. And then uh, in terms of like the last hour... And then maybe like a draft live stream as well. Because yeah, so. we did a last hour stream last year, didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Did pretty well. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Beautiful.